Ooh. That's in the book of Deuteronomy. What? Who wrote that one? Uh, God said this in the book of Deuteronomy. He says... Is this Old Testament Deuteronomy? That's Old Testament, yeah. Wow. Towards the old, end of the Old Testament. He says, if you see a woman walking through a field yeah. and you want her, you can rape her. Exact words used, by the way. And it says, <laughs> what? if after you rape her, you decide you want to keep her, you can make her your wife. <laughs> wow. That is an absolute lie. The truth is exactly the opposite. First, you need to understand that among the Hebrews, if the woman was having relations outside the marriage, it was an embarrassment to her and her family. So the basic rule of life is that a girl is entering a marriage as a virgin. Let's see what happens in Deuteronomy chapter 22 verses 13 to 21. If a man married a girl and lied that the girl was not a virgin, he should be punished. He should pay for trying to embarrass her and her family and he must not divorce her, ever. But if she does not tell her future husband while entering a marriage that she is not a virgin, and then he finds out, she is to be put to death. That is the importance of the virginity, among Hebrews. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verses 25 to 27 clearly says that for non-consensual relations, a man is to be put to death, because, the betrothed girl had cried out, but there was no one to save her. So you can clearly see that God says for a man who forces non-consensual relations, that the punishment for that man is death. Verses 28 to 29, do not use the same verb as in verse 25. The different verbs suggest different actions. Verses 28 to 29, talk about a man and a non-married virgin woman having relations outside of marriage, and they are caught doing it, it would be an absolute embarrassment for the woman and her family that she now does not marry that man. And since they are seen and caught, he must now marry her and not divorce her. If they were not caught, she would be a non-virgin woman entering a marriage which would be embarrassing, and the future husband would have to know about it before the marriage. So in verses 28 to 29, the same thing is happening as in the Exodus chapter 22 verses 16 to 17. If a man seduces a virgin who is not betrothed and lies with her, he shall give the bride price for her and make her his wife. If her father utterly refuses to give her to him, he shall pay money equal to the bride price for virgins. So the verdict is clear. In the crime described in verse 25, where a man forcibly takes a woman and lies with her, the punishment for that man is death. In verse 28, a man takes a woman to lie with her without using force, and they are caught in the act before marriage. Consequently, he is obligated to marry her. It's important to note that the crime described in verse 25 and the transgression in verse 28 are distinct cases and should not be conflated. Another lie. And how is the Ark of the Covenant related to this? Well, when the Great Pyramid for some reason stopped producing enough power, they took the Ark of the Covenant and they created that rose granite box inside the king's chamber and they put it inside of there. What is the Ark of the Covenant? It's a power generating technology. How do we know this? Because but what, what is it, uh, what do people think it is? I've heard the Ark of the Covenant. I think what does it's that this mean? holy thing that existed that, uh, you know, just protected the Hebrews and protected them from the Pharaoh. It is like saying that Samson's hair gave him his strength. No, not cutting his hair represented and was part of the covenant that he had to keep. And while he did that, God helped him and protected him. So no, the Ark of the Covenant did not help the Jews by itself. The Ark of the Covenant represents the covenant the Jews had to keep so that God would protect them. When they did not live up to the covenant, God did not help them, whether they had the Ark of the Covenant by them or not. Another lie. And that's what was inside of the, uh, the stone box. How do I know? It's the same exact dimensions as the Ark of the Covenant. No. The Ark of the Covenant does not exactly fit the granite box in the king's chamber inside the pyramid. The dimensions of the Ark of the Covenant are described in Exodus chapter 25 verses 10 to 22 as being 2.5 cubits long, 1.5 cubits wide, and 1.5 cubits high. The length of the cubit varied over time and from place to place, but these lengths typically ranged from around 44 centimeters to even 54 centimeters. So the Ark could be from around 110 centimeters long. 66 centimeters wide and 66 centimeters high to around 135 centimeters long, 81 centimeters wide and 81 centimeters high. Inside the king's chamber, the box measures about 198 centimeters long, 68 centimeters wide and 87 centimeters deep. Even with the exact measurement of the cubit, the Ark of the Covenant couldn't fit into the box because the proportions are completely different. Please like, share and subscribe.